I've been studying common guillemots throughout my career. They're amongst the most social birds and they breed in dense colonies on sea cliffs. They're long lived, they can live for 20 or 30 years and they retain the same partner for most of that time. And so in that respect, they're rather like humans and we describe them as being monogamous, but like humans, they have the occasional extra pair mating as well. The guillemot social behaviour is complex and one behaviour in particular that has always intrigued me is something called allopreening, where one bird preens another. They spend about 10% of their time doing this, so this behaviour is clearly important. The question is, what is its purpose? Let's start by defining exactly what we mean by animal behaviour. Animal behaviour is the scientific study of what animals do. The term scientific is important here, as we'll see. In terms of what animals do, well, one thing that guillemots do is allopreening, but animals do many other things. Animal behaviour is any movement. It could be a display, it could be feeding, it could even be playing. We can ask two fundamental questions about animal behaviour. They're referred to as proximate and ultimate. Proximate questions are those concerned with the mechanisms that bring about behaviour. Ultimate questions are those concerned with the evolution of behaviour. We can divide the proximate and ultimate questions into two sub-questions. For proximate, how does the behaviour develop? And secondly, what causes the behaviour? For ultimate, we can ask how did the behaviour evolve? And secondly, what is the adaptive significance of the behaviour? What's its purpose? Together, these comprise what are called Tinbergen's four questions about animal behaviour. Nico Tinbergen was one of the founding fathers of the study of animal behaviour. These questions represent the different ways of studying animal behaviour. And understanding the difference between those four questions are fundamental to understanding behaviour and indeed the whole of biology. How do we study animal behaviour? Well, that depends on the type of question we're hoping to answer. If you're interested in how behaviour develops, you might have to hand rear animals in captivity and see how their behaviour changes as they get older. You could also do this in the wild as well. If you're interested in causal mechanisms, you might have to work in the lab. For example, you might be interested in hormone levels. And that might mean measuring hormone levels in the lab or manipulating hormone levels in the animal itself. If you're interested in the evolutionary history of behaviour, you might have to do that in the lab because that involves using molecular techniques to construct a phylogeny, that's an evolutionary tree, and then using maybe somebody else's data to plot onto that phylogeny. If you're interested in the adaptive significance of behaviour, you would probably spend time in the field observing animals. The study of animal behaviour is scientific because researchers make hypotheses and test predictions by collecting data. If those data are consistent with the predictions, then the support for that particular hypothesis. Science is based on evidence, not just on opinion. One hypothesis for the adaptive significance of allopreening in guillemots is that allopreening has a hygienic function by removing ectoparasites, like ticks, from the plumage of other guillemots. One prediction, therefore, would be that allopreening removes ticks. You could test this by adding model ticks onto guillemots and seeing whether neighbouring birds remove them. If they do, that would be consistent with your hypothesis, but hardly overwhelming support. Animal behaviour researchers usually try to think up several predictions from the original hypothesis. Can you think of any other additional predictions from the hygienic hypothesis? Animal behaviour relies on a number of concepts. And the most important of those concepts is natural selection. And natural selection operating at the level of the individual. This is particularly important if you're trying to understand ultimate questions about behaviour. But there are other concepts as well, and together these comprise theory. So the study of animal behaviour is more about concepts than it is about facts. In other words, it's more important to understand the theory than it is to understand particular facts. It's actually both. Animal behaviour is a broad subject, 
precisely because of those four questions. And some researchers want to try and answer all four questions. If you were to do that, you'd have to be an expert both in field biology, maybe in hormone biology, neurobiology, anatomy and evolution. Why should we bother studying animal behaviour? Well, first and foremost, because we're interested in understanding why animals do what they do. There are lots of other reasons for studying animal behaviour. Conservation biologists need to know what animals do if they're going to save them. Are those animals social or solitary? How much space do they need? And how many mates do they have? Sometimes you can't predict the outcome of research. Fernando Notobom started out being interested in how birds know what to sing. Yet his research eventually led to a complete overhaul of the entire field of neurobiology a totally unanticipated yet utterly monumental effect. And this is the course textbook by John Alcock. The fact that this is in its ninth edition tells you how fast a field animal behaviour is. There's lots of new developments. And if you're particularly interested in the adaptive significance of behaviour, then this book by Davis, Krebs and West, An Introduction to Behavioural Ecology. This will see you through all three or four years of your undergraduate degree here. And there are lots of other books you can read, including some popular science books that will give you a really good feel for what animal behaviour is all about. To understand more about the principles of animal behaviour, you should read the first chapter of John Alcock's book. And if you're really keen, you could join the Association for the Study of Animal Behaviour ASAP for just £15 that allows you to apply for research grants that you could use in vacations and to come to the ASAP conferences.